Dr. Mandana, you have a, a, a pretty nice production. Eh? <laughs> I you try. Have all this nice. You, you're becoming a movie director. <laughs> <laughs> I really try. I do. Okay, we are live. People can see and hear us. All right. Hello, friends on YouTube. We have, as usual, about five minutes to begin. This is our testing time. So, yes, we have sound there. Welcome everybody, just a few minutes. You will see the countdown going. Raghu, I forgot to mention to you, you have your YouTube on, right? I, I have my YouTube on, Mandana. Okay, thank and you. my phone. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Yes, we have just a few minutes. And... Um, Dr. Boko, you, you're without sound right now. I was saying it's amazing how long five minutes is when you watch the seconds count down. <laughs> that is that true. Well, now you can listen to some music. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very professional. I'm, I'm, I'm... That's really nice production, Dr. Mandana. Yes, it's quite a nice sort of a foot tapping number <laughs> together. Everybody woken up and start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Boko, you are in the same uh, time zone that I am. You are like. Uh, Time zone. I think we might at the most for one time zone off from you, but I think we're in the same time zone. Okay. I think when I've gone to Brazil, I, I haven't had to switch my watch. Nice, nice. Nasser, Dr. Aditya, Dr. Ayappa, Dr. Pushpalata, and of course Raghu there. Hi everybody. settle down in front of their, their stops.
So greetings and welcome to another live stream on the Oral Pathology 360 channel. I'm Dr. Mandana Donahue, your host for today, and it is absolutely welcome uh, and lovely to have all of you here. Now today, yes, we have another Beyond the Borders session. This time we are going to Brazil and the Amazon region. Thanks to our dearest guest, Dr. Tiago Pinheiro, who is another wonderful find for me because I found him on LinkedIn. There is much that LinkedIn has brought to my life and I'm very happy for it. Great contributions as far as oral pathology goes. Wonderful. So a very welcome to Dr. Tiago. Wonderful to have you here on the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You it's a welcome. pleasure to be among you. Thank you. And then we have, of course, our panel. And today's panel, two people I'm particularly fond of and really glad to have on the channel. Uh, we have Dr. Raghu, Professor of Oral Pathology in Manipal, College of Dental Sciences. He is moderating the session. He, of course, has many achievements and many accolades and uh, a very long CV that uh, every time he is on the channel, I make a slightly shorter. <laughs> And this is his ninth time on the channel. He is essentially a part of the channel. So I seriously, I know I cut his CV may not be good, but really he is uh, just uh, a, a lot of publications, a lot of presentations, a lot of awards and uh, everything that you can think of. He is also, besides being professor, of course, at Manipal, he is also the uh, director of international collaborations at MAHE. Then, of course, our next and very dear guest is uh, Dr. Jerry Boko, Director of Research, the Maxillofacial Center for Education and Research. He is an emeritus professor and past chair of two departments in two wonderful dental schools in the US for 28 years. He has been co-author of the book most of us have read, the Neville's textbook, which is, of course, one of the most, I think maybe probably the most uh, popular book that has ever been there as far as oral pathology goes. He has published more than 415 papers, abstracts, and book chapters. Dr. Boko's pre-cancer oral disease epidemiology and bone research has been cited more than 17,000 times. And yes, that was right, 17,000 times. And his Boko to go drop box files are the most popular oral pathology files on the internet. They provide more than 3,600 copyright-free clinical and microscopic oral pathology photos, and that's generosity for you. And in fact, that is how I met him, because once I found out about it, I years ago, I think I got in touch with him and requested him to please let me share that on my Facebook page. And he very gladly said, please share it as much as you want. <laughs> that was really very sweet. <laughs> and uh, yes, he has uh, won numerous awards including the highest award that is given by uh, the American Cancer Society, that's the St. George Medal, the Distinguished Alumnus Award from the University of Minnesota, the Lifetime Achievement Award from West Virginia University and Honorary Diplomat Status from the American Board of Oral Medicine. With, well, it's just, it, it's magnificent to have him here. He was here already for, uh, Wonderful lecture that he took. If you have not seen it, you should. It's uh, Dangerous Mucosa, a walk through 180 years of oral precancers. It is available on the Beyond the Borders series. So it is really great to have both of you here. Thank you so much and welcome to all three of you. With that, now I will stop talking and I will request Raghu to please introduce our speaker. Thank you, Mandana. Uh for that kind introduction. Good morning, uh, Tiago, and good morning, uh, Jerry. So I have the pleasant task of introducing a friend and an amazing colleague from Manaus, Amazon. Graduated in dentistry from the Federal University of Espirito Santo, he has master's and a doctorate in oral pathology from Dentistry School of Bauru, University of Sao Paulo. He's currently the professor of oral maxillofacial pathology and oral medicine and head of surgical pathology lab at the State University of Amazonas. Besides running a successful oral maxillofacial pathology diagnostic service, he has to his credit over 180 
research publications, including articles and books. I have the honor of introducing an amazing friend from the Brazilian state of Amazonas, Dr. Tiago Pinheiro to Oral Pathology 360 Beyond Borders. He will be sharing his experience in the last 10 years practicing in the Amazon, the amazing gonic lesions. Over to you, Dr. Tiago. Thank you, Agro, for kind words. Uh, I, I would like to, uh, before anything, I would like to express my, my satisfaction in being here with you and have this moment of sharing and, and learning with you. Uh, Dr. Boko, uh, I, I met him, uh, I, I always remember when I met him, it was in a, in a IAOP meeting here in Brazil. And we, we got there before the meeting, like one day or, uh, before, and we j just didn't have much to do. And we would go to wandering around the, the, the hotel. And one day we, we just start to, to talk in the afternoon. And a couple of people, he knew everyone over there I, I, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, I, I never seen him before. So uh, he was like, oh, I'm Jerry Boko, okay. And, and I, I, here in Brazil, uh, we didn't actually say his name right. We, we say Boko. We don't say it, uh, Boko uh, uh, as frequently. So uh, I, I didn't connect the, the dots, you know. And I was like, chatting with him uh, like a whole afternoon and he presented me to a bunch of people and then in the end I was like uh, so your acquaintance with, with Dr. Boko nice Santiago people came to me and uh, Dr. Boko I just met him uh, uh, and they were like that's Dr. Boko <laughs> I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> so that was really nice, uh, and uh, and at that time I was uh, in the beginning of my my career, my academic career, and uh, I was talking with him uh, the hard stuff I was I was facing at that time, uh, the challenges I, I was facing, and 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 he he just came to me and said, "Hey, I I, I lived all that." I lived all that. I, I started in a poor state in, in, in the US and I treated uh, uh, many patients as you described and uh, uh, keep faith in the process that it's, not, it's gonna happen, you know? So, uh, and here I am, you know, uh, talking with him years later, a uh, couple uh meetings that we, we, we met to, together and had a couple of beers and, and chat a lot. So it's really nice to, to, to be uh, with him right now. And uh, I, I, I owe that to you, Dr. Mandara. Uh, I, I could never even imagine that, that this would be happening, you know. So it's a great pleasure for me, you know. I, I, I would like to, to make that clear. Uh, Hagu, uh, once in a while, I, I'm still in touch with him. Uh, and uh, I follow his, his career uh, with, with uh, 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 very proud of him, uh, what he's doing. And uh, uh, it's always good to, to, to see him, you know, <laughs> because he's such a kind person and, and has uh, uh, this, this, this calmness that uh, involve us. Uh, it's always good to talk with him. So uh, yes, that, that, that's awesome. Thank you. And uh, I hope that we have a, 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 a nice uh, time here, right? right? Yes, definitely. Uh, can I, I start share the-, the Yes, please, yes. The, all right, so I'll share my, my screen. Okay, scanning in. I will start the presentation here. Okay, it's on. All right. So uh, just for starters, uh, 
here's where I am right now, you know. Uh, Manaus, uh, we call it uh, dry island in Brazil because um, we are like two hour flight from the next airport and uh, surrounded by heavy, dense uh, rainforest. And uh, the, our main roads are, are the rivers. So uh, we are isolated here. I, I'm not from here, actually. Uh, uh, here is Vitoria. You can see in the map where I did my, my grad studies. Uh, I lived, Vitoria is, is in uh, uh, one of the richest uh, states in Brazil, the, 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 the most developed region, which is the southeastern region of Brazil. And I studied in Bauru Dental School, which is one of the best uh, schools in Brazil. So it, it was kind of far from, from Vitoria, but uh, we could do it like in a 12 hour drive uh, by car. And uh, when I, 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 I was finishing my, my studies in, in Bauru Dental School, uh, I was really open. Uh, I knew what I want. I, I want to, to get in a, a, a public school. Here, the public schools are the state schools, federal schools uh, are the most uh, developed in, in research because they get uh, governmental funding. Um, so I, I knew what I want. I, I want to get in a, in, a, in a nice school and I was open to wherever uh, my, my, my chances led, you know? And uh, I ended up here. And, and in the beginning, I thought that would be like a couple of years. Yeah. I would go, I just like, okay, I will start over there and, and I make my name and then I go anywhere else. And here I am 10, more than 10 years later. And I don't, not planning to live anymore. Uh, Manaus gave me uh, uh, a family, gave me a nice place to work, uh, friends, and um, I'm really uh, proud of what we 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 made happen here. You know, uh, for for instance. You can see the the state; it's pretty large. Uh, state. We, we were talking just before uh, Dr. Uh, Boko was telling that uh, Texas was a big state. We here have uh, one point six kilometer square states. Uh, is almost half of of India uh, uh, size, you know, and uh, in and we do with a lot few people now yeah? only 3.8 million uh, uh, on this massive amount of, of land you know uh, even though we Manaus here uh, where I live has uh, the sixth GDP uh, in Brazil in, in Brazil cities uh, that's because uh, since uh, the our last, our past uh, dictatorship <laughs> back in, in, in the 80s that, that ended up in the military dictatorship uh, as a, a, a form of, of uh, keep the, the force uh, standing, the, the government uh, made some, some arrangements so uh, industries would get benefits from uh, if they 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 uh, made their plants over here. So we here is the has a very advanced industrial pole uh, which makes all the the electronics in, in Brazil. So uh, that generate a lot of, of budget. And uh, actually, my my university gets like uh, 
10% or 1%, something like that, of all these taxes. So uh, that made uh, 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 Amazonas State University uh, a pretty rich university in, in the country. So when I got here, uh, they have uh, this, this rich university uh, with uh, pretty fair uh, labs with uh, material, with uh, technicians. But uh, the technicians need, needed training because they, they never had uh, cut a, a slide before. The, the machinery was uh, only for showing up, but never worked. <laughs> And uh, uh, the, uh, that, that was the, the scene that I got here, uh, like a, a white uh, canvas that uh, I would have to, to paint it the way I wanted. And I, I, I was really nice, uh, well recepted by, by, by people from here. And they were like, oh, we, we needed you so much. Uh, but we only have uh, uh, the Federal University here uh, that has uh, our pathology service. Uh, and uh, it's not enough for, for our demand. And, and uh, we have this, this university here with, with everything uh, ready to start. And has already ten years now. Our, our university is really uh, uh, young. We, we have a, a, a twenty-one years old of age. The university t itself, you know, and uh, they had it for ten years without making any slide, even having uh, labs and everything. So. Uh, that's that's what I, I got here and and, and when I, I I I started to work uh, I noticed that uh, doing uh, biopsies and and the things that I need needed to to become what I wish now uh, uh, practicing uh, oral pathology uh, as a living I would have to train. Uh, also people uh, to perform biopsies. Yeah? And uh, another thing is that uh, when I came here, I, I was like, oh, I will, I will face all this, this exquisite uh, uh, lesions and I, I, will, I will be master in, in in some rare diseases from the Amazon. I had all these dreams about here. And, and, and I, I always thought about this amazing onic lesions huh? that, that was always in my head. And when I got here, what I, what I really found was that our lesions are the same lesions everywhere else, you know? The, 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 the biggest difference here is that uh, because of social inequity, because even though we have some uh, richness, wealthness in, in the state, because of this industrial pool and everything, uh, there's a lot of inequity. So uh, there, there are a lot of poor people. Huh? And they are isolated. You, you can see here in the map uh, uh, a satellite vision. Uh, you can only see forest. You know, you, you, you don't see anything. And, and, the, and the cities are far apart from each other. And they uh, sometimes take days or weeks even uh, to get from there to Manaus. And, and that in, in, not, in most of these places, uh, the great majority of these this places uh, doesn't even have a, a decent hospital. So uh, that's what uh, first struck me, you know, 
because uh, uh, people, uh, the lesions here were the, pretty much the same that I have practiced and studied uh, back in, in the southeastern part of Brazil, but they were always like advanced, late diagnosed, uh, and that changed the game, you know. Um, so here uh, today, I, I collect some of, of the most uh, 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 highlights of this year to, to share with you. You know, I hope you enjoy it. Okay. So here is my, my school. Um, we have here in the bottom the, my lab. My lab is in, in, in this uh, uh, left corner, uh, in the first uh, floor. It, 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 it is uh, all the, 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 the lab is, is through the, this first floor. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty huge facility. We have two, uh, microscope uh, uh, class, classes like this one uh, that you see the, the, the students uh, where we can have a uh, practice. Uh, we have uh, a private uh, room for, for doing my reports, just shown here. Uh, the, the lab itself where, where it makes the the histotech processing, uh, it's 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 really nice. Uh, also, here in the in the the middle of the to the right side, you can see the the entrance of the lab. Um, this big building here in the middle is the, our dental clinics. Uh, uh, our our medicine clinic uh, works in, in the this first floor here, and here's is my crew. Uh, Doctor Lyonnais, he is uh, he is master in in tropical pathology and doctor in biotechnology. Dr. Antonio uh, here in the, in the corner is a uh, uh, master in, or, in, in, in dentistry with focus in oropathology. And Dr. Miriam is uh, a master in, in radiology. Uh, she's doing her her PhD right now, I, I, I don't remember in, in, in what field. Um, and also we, we have the, the help of uh, doctor, so surgeons, né? The, the surgeon, the oral surgery discipline uh, with Dr. Flavio Fayad and his team. And uh, we also have, uh, the resource of uh, uh, Dr. Marco Rocha, which is a uh, head and neck surgeon and uh, his team to perform the malignancies. Uh, the, the Amazon State University, uh, because it's a, a state university, it counts with all the state hospitals. So we can, uh, if we have a, a, a patient oncologic patient, we have the oncologic uh, hospital. If we have a tropical disease patient, we have the tropical disease hospital. A dermatology patient, we have the dermatology hospital. <laughs> and a uh, 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 young patient, we have the, the state uh, kids hospitals. So uh, we, are, we have good uh, uh, hospitals that work with the university, and uh, we have uh, free uh, free passage to to work 
inside these hospitals as we need. So uh, I was telling uh, Dr. Mandan and Dr. Boko before, we are now about to open a uh, uh, hospital uh, dentistry uh, residency. So uh, to, to even get these uh, things closer and, and improve our, 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 our game here, you know. We already have uh, in, in the Federal University uh, our pathology residency, which I, I helped to create. And in uh, Amazonas State University, we have a book maxillofacial surgery residency. Uh, they, are, they all uh, work well together and help each other. And uh, uh, these all, these achievements happen during my time here. So uh, I'm really proud of what we got. And, and, uh, and, and we are now uh, collecting the benefits of, of all these uh, breakthroughs, you know. Um, so let's start with the lesions, actually. I, I, I really don't have, uh, I, instead of, of make uh, focus in one uh, field in, in our pathology, I, I picked some nice cases uh, in these uh, uh, subjects so, so we could uh, have a, a, a more rich conversation, you know. Uh, are like a couple or three cases of, of, of each of these um, subjects. So uh, please feel free to interrupt me at any time and ask anything uh, that you, you, you want to share. And uh, sometimes we, we, we talk here with the computer, it seems like really lonely. So uh, all right, uh, I'll start with uh, some of infectious diseases that I thought that it would be a lot more frequent uh, than I faced. Yeah. But when they, they show up, um, it, it, it usually uh, demands a lot of studying, a lot of uh, investigation and uh, not always are easy to, to, to get the resources to correctly diagnose. That, that's one of the things here. Uh, sometimes we need uh, lab tests, like uh, blood tests that are not always available, or the patient will have to face a line and wait, and, and then uh, it, it just uh, becomes unuseful for the, the dynamics of the treatment. Um, that's one of the, the problems that we face every day here uh, with this kind of, 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 of diseases. Now, so I'll start with, with the, this case here. Uh, this, this boy came to our uh, advanced training in our medicine and our pathology. Uh, and um, he, he came from another state, actually. He, he came from uh, Pará state. Uh, Amazonas, uh, uh, Pará state is like almost the size of, of Amazonas state. It's, all, it's also a, a huge state in Brazil and has uh, also the, uh, the Amazon forest over there. And part of the state is, is closer to Manaus than uh, from Belém, which is the capital of that state. So uh, people from, from this southern part of, of uh, Pará state comes to, to, to seek help with us, you know. And this boy, he worked in, in agriculture. Uh, he was like 
uh, 16 and, and uh, worked every day. Uh, he, he wouldn't uh, have a nice place to live. He, he actually lived, uh, spent his nights with the animals, you know, uh, because uh, he, he was like a contract uh, kind of job that he, he did. He was away from, from actually his, his family with 16 years old working. And uh, he got uh, to us uh, like really skinny and uh, with, with these lesions, with these lesions in, in, in the dorsum uh, that reminded us in, in, in the beginning uh, uh, herpes, now, uh, herpes zoster uh, pattern because it, it spreads uh, bilaterally, but not exactly in, in the same level, you see. Uh, it was like a rash uh, with some flaking in the, in the skin. And he has had that ulcer in, in his lip, uh, was already more than one month uh, with this ulcer. Uh, he had, uh, because he worked and everything, he had time limitations. So uh, he had to, to he, he, he had his, his uh, travel back to, to his town uh, already scheduled. So we, we needed to diagnose fast and get him on treatment. Um, so right in the, in the first uh, clinical session with him, we uh, usually, uh, during this course, uh, the students uh, have clinics on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And uh, we, we, we plan to, he, he got it on, on a Thursday night. So we, we performed the smear, a, a cytologic smear of this ulcer and also from the skin. And uh, uh, because of his story, his clinical history, we also uh, asked him to uh, prescribe the uh, uh, thorax uh, imaginological radiographic exam. So uh, when the, the, the cytology and the radiograph would, would uh, come to us, we would perform uh, the biopsy uh, more aware of what we were dealing, and uh, what we we saw in the in this smear was uh, some uh, interesting features like uh, uh, giant multinucleated cells. And we also would find this round yeasts. Uh, here uh, we colored with uh, uh, PAS, and uh, you you can see that uh, it, it it was PAS positive. This this round yeasts, and uh, so we we and and he, when he got two days later with the with the uh, lung imaging, we saw the report uh, also showed uh, uh, lesions in his lungs. So, so he, he would have small nodular lesions, uh, uh, para-iliac in the para-ilar uh, para region. So here close to the, the hills, 
you, you find uh, these round uh, uh, nodules. And uh, then we, we, we already were pretty sure what we are dealing with. And uh, we performed the, the, the incisional biopsy from his lip. And uh, at first sight, you can see the, uh, the mucosa with the uh, really intense inflammation, chronic inflammation, and uh, with the histotechnician uh, uh, coloration of uh, musicarmine and, and PAS, uh, the the east uh, popped, you know, and uh, we we uh, referred him to the the tropical disease uh, uh, hospital for treatment, and when he got there, they 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 were like suspicious of my of my diagnose so they they performed the uh, 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 in situ hybridization fluorescence in situ hybridization um, exam uh, using uh, pan fungus and the uh, histoplasma probe and uh, as you can see it marked so it confirmed uh, to be uh, histoplasmosis. He didn't have AIDS. Uh, he, he was an HIV, he was a HIV negative uh, person. Uh, we believe that he, he just had uh, too much of labor and, and bad uh, health conditions, his bad health conditions. Immun he was immunosuppressed by by the way he was living, you know, without proper food and, and excess of work. Um, so that, that that case shocked us a lot, and he 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 remained uh, for a couple of weeks in, in the hospital uh, treating, and he got better really fast, you know, and uh, and came back to work, to his old life, you know. So uh, do you have any comments here uh, about it? Uh, Dr. Boko? Uh, Tiago, what we will do is we will be taking the questions at the end. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, this this case uh, was like really intriguing uh, because the the morphology uh, of uh, uh, histoplasma is is quite difficult because it, it's uh, the size of these are, are very small and uh, and and sometimes it looks like a, a, a plasma site. Uh, uh, becoming a, a, a Russell uh, corpuscle, and uh, uh, when I, I, I showed the, the 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 case to to medical uh, pathologists, uh, I, I I was pretty sure that it seems like. Uh, uh, histoplasm, but they 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 really wanted to confirm, so they did the, this this fish test, and uh, I actually found that that was pretty nice. So if you have the aids for it, let's do it. You know, uh, I I in my point of view, uh, I thought it was a, a waste of time. We could enter with the with the the fungi. Uh, meds, anti-fungi medicine with the azolic or something like that. Uh, 
we we uh, had another case of uh, of, of histoplasm, uh, which I, I sent it to them, uh, and the patient died because uh, they started amphotericin B, and which is hepatotoxic, and uh, the the patient recovered from the 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 fungi infection, but uh, got liver failure. So she, she ceased. So uh, at this time, I was like, don't start with, with the amphotericin uh, with him. Start with, with something uh, like a azole. Uh, and they, they performed the uh, itaconazole. And, uh, and it was enough uh, because actually, I think that most of this case uh, was caused because of his uh, very unhealthful way of living, you know, uh, these bad social conditions that caused all that. So uh, just improving that uh, being held in, in, in the hospital with regular food, with time to sleep, and uh, a simple medicine, he recovered just fine, you know? So sometimes you have to think that as well, right? Okay, uh, here we have another two interesting cases that uh, uh, can give you a picture of what we face here every day uh, as simple stuff, but uh, I never seen as much as here, and we will discuss uh, about that, uh, which is uh, parasitic infections, oral mucosal parasitic infections. Yeah, this both cases have in common that affect uh, women and. Uh, that uh, were total processes, uh, dental processes, you know? uh, and and that uh, was really uh, in both cases was it was uh, a regular biopsy of a fibrous hyperplasia. In this first case, here in the bottom was just a hyperplasia. In the the case in the top. We, we thought that could be like a uh, fungal infection, like can, a candida fungal infection. And uh, when we got to see the, the, the slides, we were, wait, 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 there's something odd here. Stop everything. Let's, let's take a closer look. Uh, in, the, in this case of the bottom, which was the first, um in the in the surface it, it really looked like a lot as a normal uh, uh, fibrous hyperplasia nothing uh, extremely uh, catchy you know but uh, in the in the mo more lower uh, levels of the, the, the of the specimen uh, deeper in, in the in the connective tissue uh, we would find a lot of, of uh, multinuclear giant cells and uh, some of them were uh, surrounding uh, these uh, eeling wings you know these yellow rings uh, got my attention, and and yellow rings could be a lot of stuff, you know. And yellow rings can be like uh, uh, vegetable matter, can be silica, can be uh, a lot of stuff. So uh, I took a while investigating the the size and the shape of that and uh, I got to the uh, uh, 
parasitology lab uh, on the university and ask them for eggs that they would have there uh, uh, of ancylostoma. And they, they had those eggs. Uh, they, they usually make fast preparations for showing to the students and they, they had the um, spare. And I, I stained those with the uh, PAS to, to make a comparison, a size comparison. And you, you, you see here that it's just about right. It's the same uh, size. Uh, the only difference is that uh, the, these eggs that I found uh, were sliced, right? Because of the, the section, the microscopic section. And, the, and the, here in the side, the, this experimental egg was a, a 3D, uh, was direct mounting, you know? Uh, so I, I was pretty convinced that it, it was actually a, a, a par parasitic infection. So we uh, asked the patient uh, coprological tests, uh, and uh, it, it, it was confirmed she, she had uh, a parasitic infection, infection and uh, she took uh, nitoxazid uh, for uh, a, a regular uh, administration. I, I don't remember the, the exact amount. I, I think it's like three days uh, 500 milligrams, if I'm not uh, wrong, mm -hmm. of nitoxazid, and she got well. And in this case here in the top, uh, because we, we thought it could be a, a fungal infection in the beginning, or also a, a salivary gland disease, we, we performed in, uh, in the first visit, uh, uh, fine needle uh, expiration uh, cytology tests, and we found uh, a lot of connective tissue, inflamed connective tissue, uh, and, and we didn't see any salivary gland structures that, that would uh, lead to, to uh, uh, possible uh, salivary gland disease. So uh, when we performed the, the incisional biopsy, we, we were already aware there was probably inflammatory nature, the, the lesion, right? And for my uh, surprise, uh, we found uh, this hookworm, this uh, it's also compatible uh, with uh, um, ancylostoma. Yeah, they they usually uh, do uh, like uh, larva migrants pattern when they they infect the oral mucosa, and and we believe that uh, why the, these parasites uh, infected the mouth because it's not normal for them to, to, to be in the mouth. Uh, it was because of the, the wearing of the total prosthesis, uh, improper cleaning, regular cleaning of this prosthesis and uh, uh, low quality of the process because uh, this uh, chronic trauma may uh, uh, help the, this infection to, to happen. You know, uh, if you get a, a, a not very well established and adapted total prosthesis, it, it usually have a, like a jingling uh, uh, trauma and, uh, and that's a, the opening for uh, these infections. Uh, this lady uh, here in the top, 
she she had she was working uh, after we, we discovered the 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 hookworm she she told us that she worked a lot with gardening in, in her home and so we we thought that that might be the the case of how, how she, she infected yeah uh, sometimes it's, it's just uh, contaminated food that you get from a restaurant it's it's pretty uh, common here uh, in manaus uh, popular restaurants sometimes they don't have a good uh, hygiene and and uh, it's it's really uh, a thing that I, I, I never seen so much uh, before I, I came here so we, we already gathered like six cases uh, uh, similar cases you know of, of parasitic infections or parasitic infections uh, during the, the past five years or so. So I think that that's a, 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 a regional problem. I don't see uh, many discussion about it uh, anywhere else. Uh, I think it's one of those denied uh, diseases, you know, that people just don't care much to to study. You see, and and studying the the the, the this uh, total process is as a a possible a source of of trauma in leading to to the infection. Yeah. Uh, should be more discussed in the in the literature, uh, in, in my point of view, right? Um, okay. Uh, we, we presented this this cases in in, in Brazilian uh, oral maxillofacial pathology and oral medicine meeting uh, in 2017. And now we are uh, fin in finishing a study. Uh, we are about to publish comparing different yellow rings uh, uh, related diseases with vegetable matter, with parasitic infection. Uh, we hope soon it get accepted in one of the these places we are we're trying to publish and you get to, to see the, the article. Now I'll show some nice uh, stories about salivary gland disease. Um, here we have uh, three cases. I, I, I didn't want to show you one, so I, I took like three cases of um, adenoid cystic carcinoma. Uh, these cases were the first cases that I ever uh, diagnosed of this disease. I, I've, my training in, in Bauru Dental School took like six years of training, three in the masters and three years in the, in the, in the PhD, uh, we had like 3,000 uh, cases per year. And my first uh, case of adenosis carcinoma was here in Manaus. So uh, that, that's, I, I found it really, really amusing because uh, it's a really, uh, although it's a, it's a malignancy, uh, it responds really good to different types of, of, of treatments. Uh, this first case over here, uh, we got a 13 year old uh, girl. She, she got with us at the, at the 
uh, uh, the oral medicine uh, service of the university. And uh, she presented this well uh, vascularized uh, nodular lesion in the left uh, hard and soft palate. And uh, a cone beam uh, imaging, we, we noticed that the lesion uh, had compromised all the 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 right uh, maxillary sinus and uh, it was already destroying the the floor of the orbit and the the limit of the nasal cavity um, and the, because she was, uh, we, we perform a small biopsy. And here's the the classic uh, pattern of of adenoid cystic carcinoma. And uh, the thing was that the her mom and 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 her herself they didn't want to to perform surgery. Uh, we, we proposed along with the, the head and neck surgery team, uh, a maxillary resection. And uh, they, they didn't uh, agree with that. So they started like 16 sessions of radiotherapy. And that was like uh, eight years ago, or nine years ago. And uh, and after those sections, she came, and there was there was there was totally clean. Uh, it didn't have any uh, commitment anymore. It was like uh, so. She she kept uh, doing uh, uh, maintenance, like a regular follow up visits. And uh, she's already 21 right now. Uh, I'm, I'm in touch with her because uh, every now and then she has like dental problems. And uh, because she, she got so much radiation, she has a high risk of developing uh, 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 radiation bone necrosis. So, uh but other than that she's still pretty fine and it's it's really a nice case to share because uh it was a totally non invasive uh uh treatment of this lesion and it, so far so good it, it already has like uh 8 years of follow up and and she's still clean you know we will keep doing the, the follow-up, but uh, so far, so good. Uh, the, the, this second case here in, in the bottom uh, was in an older uh, patient. She had uh, the small nodule in the, in the soft palate, right soft palate. And uh, we performed what we thought that would be like a mucosal biopsy and excised the, the, the apparent lesion. And for our surprise, uh, it was a uh, 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 adenoid cystic carcinoma. Uh, this this lesion was a little harder for, for me to diagnose because it didn't has had as much as those classical uh, features. So uh, we asked for immuno uh, and uh, at that time we, we didn't uh, could, we couldn't perform immuno at testings here. We would have to send the lose the case and send all the material away and 
and only get a report. Uh, nowadays, we we change that. We, we I now uh, design the 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 our immune panel. Uh, still, we we still don't do the 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 reactions here. We, we, we the material goes to Rio and stains over there. The panel that I ask, and, and then the uh, uh, the the block and the the slides come uh, with that panel. So, uh, it's a lot faster now uh, because of this. Uh, it usually would take like more than a month because uh, when we we send uh, uh, these cases for for immuno abroad of of of, of Manaus, uh, you would actually get in the routine of another lab and and it would it would be uh, reported again by another pathologist and uh, without needing that uh, it is just a it's a technician uh, thing so we go there they, they make the slides made the reaction and send the the material back to me so this this change improved our service but at that time we didn't have that so uh, it took like a while for for we to get back the confirmation uh, that it was a, a, a adenoid cyst carcinoma i was uh, thinking that it could be like a canalicular carcinoma or something like that. Uh, the, the head and neck surgeon performed the uh, uh, enlargement of the, the margins, uh, reaching the heart palate. And uh, the patient uh, uh, performed additional uh, radiotherapy. And uh, afterwards, she she was uh, referred to to the maxillofacial prosthesis service that we got in our school. Uh, it's it's a pretty uh, nice job that they do in, in in cases of facial mutilations, and they they. They made a obturator for her, and she's clean since then. It's a, it's a, it's really good as well. Uh, uh, success story, you know. Uh, we got it. Uh, the lesion in the beginning, the damage was limited, and the treatment was precise, and the patient profited from it. Uh, in this case, uh, Tiago? It, yes, yes, sorry to interrupt you. These are lovely cases, and I don't want us to miss any of them, but I'm going to have to ask you to go a little faster. A little faster, all right. Yes. Uh, how yes. much time we have? running out of time. Oh, okay. no kidding. Yeah, yeah, we already oh, have uh, one hour, just... and we will have less time for discussion. So, if you can just oh, sort of okay, okay, go a little faster. So, all right, so here we have a, a, a male case. Uh, I have operated him. Uh, I thought it was uh, a benign lesion, so uh, it was in the floor of the mouth. We, we got a regional dissection. I performed that. And um, for my surprise, it also was a... a uh, uh, adenoid cyst carcinoma, but uh, it had the, the, the capsule was all infiltrated. And, uh, and that's one problem here because uh, this patient was uh, older and he was from uh, one of these uh, cities deep inside the, the jungle. Uh, we we lost contact contact so we don't know 
uh, we had a, a, a really dangerous situation with with the with the capsule uh, infiltrated, but the patient just uh, uh, believed he was cured, you know, and and left us uh, without concluding the, the treatment. So that, that also happens here uh, quite frequently, you know, uh, because of of, of this. Uh, uh, long distances between cities. Uh, sometimes people just solve pontual problems and 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 doesn't solve anything at all, you know. And uh, later on, it, it have relapses and everything. Uh, this case has already like five years, and still he, he never showed up again. So we hope that he's okay, right? Uh, here's another uh, case, interesting case. The simple thing is just a, 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 a cellulite, but uh, it's huge. You know? uh, and uh, I, I want to share with you a uh, huge cellulite uh, This woman would have uh, like, uh, when we tried to milking the, the, the floor of the mouth, it would come this uh, pasty cream out of the duct uh, and white pasty cream and with uh, like a really bad odor. Um, and uh, it, it actually was like a, a biofilm that formed inside the, the uh, surrounding the, the cellulite and, and probably this biofilm also became part of the cellulite. Um, the surgery, we performed a, a salivary duct repositioning. Uh, it's covered by, by our names here. So uh, you can see the, the, the end of the surgery after the removal. But I got the, the cellulite and uh, performed the uh, um, uh, electronic scanning of, of it, and you can see the, the surface of, of this uh, cellulite. Uh, and if you, if you see, I, I didn't have, uh, I didn't put here, but uh, we could even notice the bacteria uh, in the surface of this, this uh, cellulite. Uh, this uh, microscopic imaging uh, of the duct, we see also a lot of, of biofilms and uh, the, the cross-section uh, uh, of h &E staining, you can see uh, like a pository pattern uh, similar to those we find in, in uh, periodontal calculus. So, uh, pretty much similar. And, and uh, it, it, after all, it was really uh, easy to treat, but uh, a really nice case because of the size of the lesion. This case here, uh, we have uh, a boy with the uh, 11 year old boy with facial asymmetry and uh, displacement of, of mm -hmm. his uh, canine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole maxillary sinus uh, filled with, with the lesion. Uh, what we did was uh, uh, remove the, the teeth with caries, dental caries, and, uh, and through that uh, opening, we enlarged and placed uh, uh, a drain. And uh, this drain remained uh, for a while as a, a decompressive uh, adjunct, and uh, the lesion really uh, improved a lot in, in two months follow-up. Uh, we removed the, the drain, and, and you see here uh, the, the developing teeth, better place, and uh, the maxillary sinus cleaned, and now he's uh, performing uh, orthodontics to to 
to get the, the occlusion right because uh, the, the lesion left like this sequel of uh, misplacement of the teeth. It, it was just a, 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 a what now they call a, a dentigerous cyst. Uh, at that time, I, I would rather call um, an inflammatory follicular cyst because uh, of the infection of the, the follicle uh, uh, through the infected uh, uh, primary teeth that actually was responsible for, for the, the disease. But, but since last uh, World Health Organization uh, book, they, they are all now uh, dentigerous cysts. This case was really uh, impressive as well. Uh, odontogenics, uh, uh, this really huge asymmetric uh, lesion with the multilocular pattern. I, I thought I was facing a, a meloblastoma. We performed a small biopsy in, 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 the, in the beginning and it was really inflamed. Uh, the, the lesion uh, was filled with the uh, uh, yellow, uh, like uh, uh, dense, creamy yellow uh, feeling, you know, um, and with bad odor. Uh, because of the extensiveness of the lesion, and, and, and it was a through and through lesion. Uh, it had compromised both uh, um, both walls, bone walls, uh, and we didn't knew for sure that it was a, a, a meloblastoma or not because this first uh, biopsy uh, we had a lot of of, of inflammation. Uh, we decided to perform a. a Amy mandibulectomy, and, and that was performed by Dr. Flavio uh, Fayad crew. And uh, as you see, it was a large specimen, and he placed uh, uh, a single uh, plate that he ha they had. That's another limitation we got here. Sometimes we don't have good materials. Uh, after a while, a while, this plate broke, and nowadays this patient lives without any uh, uh, any uh, plate or anything, and he is doing well, but uh, without a reconstitution uh, of the region. And it was actually uh, odontogenic keratocyst. That, that's uh, uh, the surprise here because uh, I really thought that was an ameloblastoma. But as you can see, when you get infection over uh, odontogenic keratocyst, it, it really gets uh, things complicated. This other case was a, a Gorling syndrome case. Uh, which we, we performed a, a very uh, uh, conservative approach. Uh, we performed like six or eight decompressive surgeries. And uh, in the beginning, you can see that the lesions were bilateral. Uh, this, she was 12 years of age when it started. She's already a uh, mom right now. She has over 21 years old. and. Uh, uh, we got rid of the lesions and totally recovered uh, from both sides. And now she's facing other lesions now in, in, in the maxillary sinus, uh, which are uh, odontogenic keratosis. And she's also presenting, start to present uh, uh, basal cell, nevoid basal cell carcinomas, as you can see. So she's still in touch. She's still uh, doing her follow-ups and we still find stuff, you know, uh, that's, uh, and she's, she's always one of the 
also one of those cases that uh, the patient lives like three to four days uh, from both uh, ride to Manaus. Here uh, is a really uh, annoying case for me. Uh, I, I, I couldn't believe when I, I saw it. Uh, this woman would have this lesion growing for 10 years, uh, wandering around uh, different uh, uh, places and never getting uh, the, the treatment she needs. And when she got to us, uh, she, she still didn't have a, a microscopic report on, on the lesion, with the lesion of this size. Uh, because she, she lived in, 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 in the interior of the, the state, we tried to perform a decompression, uh, but the lesion was multicystic, and only part of the lesion uh, was de decompressed, as you can see in the, in the uh, immediate uh, post-operative uh, uh, photo. But we got, in that approach, we got enough material to diagnose the lesion. And, she, she, and then we, we, we fought for a quick uh, uh, operation of the case. Uh, the, the, this specimen uh, weighed, weighed, weighed uh, three kilograms. Can you imagine three kilograms? of ameloblastoma and uh, and they 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 treated also with the uh, immediate reconstruction using uh, uh, a plate along with the polymethyl metacrylate uh, 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 prosthesis and, and the, the patient still under control but uh, with with the oral maxillofacial team. I don't have the contact anymore with the patient, but I know that she's in, still in control. Here's another amyloblastoma that, that we couldn't uh, treat right away because uh, here sometimes it just doesn't have the material. That's something we have to, to live every day. So, uh, they didn't have the plate in the hospital to, to do the reconstruction. So until they got the plate, we would perform decompression session. And we did it like eight decompression ses sessions for two years. And every time we did it, we got more uh, bone. So it slowly progressed a uh, growing bone because the, 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 the patient was so young, she, he, has, he had 16 years old and he really responds really good. So by the time he, he was elected for, for surgery because of, of the presence of the plate to reconstruct uh, the area, uh, we already gained a lot of, of bone and, and that made the, the the oromaxillofacial surgery team to uh, keep some of the, that basilar bone that we gained, you know, and that was good for the patient uh, because it, it uh, reduced the damage, you know. Uh, he's already two years with follow-up and he, he has this basilar bone right now and uh, we found that was a, a, a pretty good result uh, because in the beginning he would have to, to have a, a total resection of the area because of the lesion. But because we did so many decompressions and every time that we decompress, we would empty uh, all uh, uh, amyloblastoma that we would see, he actually gained some, some bone uh, for the reconstruction. So that's uh, something I, I wanted to share. Here's another case. Uh, uh, I, I even shared this case on, on Bob list at the time. Uh, I was thinking I was facing uh, 
uh, fibroodontoma, fibroodontoma at the time because the ionization pattern was really dense and sometimes it has, uh, uh, it was more eosinophilic, sometimes it was more basophilic, this ionization. I thought that it might be like a dentine formation, yeah? And uh, I, I showed this case to Dr. Mosqueda and he, wa he was like, no, Chad, I I'm really used to this intense ionization prob, uh, uh, be, uh, pattern. Uh, that's just a, a solid ameloblastoma. Uh, no worry about that. The patient uh, was, the, the lesion was resected and we placed, uh, the Dr. Fayad placed a, a metal plate with uh, a titanium mesh and a iliac bone uh, meshed bone uh, that he made a paste and rolled over with the with the with this mesh, this titanium mesh, and it became bone, really nice bone, uh, enough bone to place for dental implants. So this this case is a is a fully reconstruction case that we could do here. Uh, I don't know uh, in India, but that's really hard to get here in Manaus, at least, you know. Uh, I know places in Brazil that they do like vascularized grafts and everything fancy, but here in, in Manaus, it's, I think it was the first successful case of the state, you know, so that's a, a, a remarkable thing. Uh, I placed this case because it, it was the first case that I, I hear in my career that I diagnosed the uh, agornin cyst. Uh, I told you I, I, I was like six in Baru for my training. I, I was prepared to diagnose. I, I didn't have any problem with the, the microscopic features. But it was really nice lesion, uh, well uh, delimited, well operated by Dr. Fayad. And uh, it, it really had a really uh, charming uh, microscopic features with, the, with these uh, ghost cells and calcifications and, and ameloblastic uh, resemblance uh, of the epithelium. So, uh, I wanted to share with you right now. Another thing I would like to, to talk about here in this quick time is the problem that we have uh, with, uh, I, I believe it's the cause of late treatment here, is that um, the, the patients go back and forth in institutions until they get uh, the final treatment. Uh, that's the most uh, problem, the, the biggest problem I've, I, I identified here that uh, sometimes costs the patient's lives. Uh, some, uh, usually the patient go to a, a, a clinician, the clinician uh, sends the patient to has a suspect of of uh, malignancy like a carcinoma. Instead of performing a biopsy, a biopsy, they send the patient to the uh, cancer uh, hospital. In the cancer hospital, they don't perform biopsies. In the cancer hospital biopsies, they refer the patient to somewhere like my unit in the university that can perform the biopsy. Uh, the biopsy goes to the lab and get a, a, a diagnosis and then return uh, to the patient. And then the patient goes uh, to the, the, the hospital and get that treatment. All these back and forth uh, 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 peregrination and migration of the patient 
takes a lot of time, a lot of time in our reality because it's not uh, automatic. All these things, the patient go and and stop work and and travel and then go back home and that. Nah. So that delay in starting the treatment for me is one of the things that we still have to improve here. You know. Uh, this delay in treatment. Uh, I only got uh, one case uh, of, 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 of the, uh, carcinoma that I would like to share because this special features. Nah? This lady, uh, six years old lady, came to us with this facial symmetry, huge uh, uh, ulcer in, the, in her uh, left cheek. And uh, we performed the incisional biopsy. And what we found was multiple uh, uh, cystic-like uh, nests, you know, uh, forming like a rabbit hole pattern. Uh, and that was throughout the, the specimen. And we diagnosed, which is the only one that I did it in my career, uh, cuniculatum carcinoma. Yeah? And uh, this patient uh, went to Dr. Marco Rocha in the cancer hospital. Uh, he did a beautiful resection uh, with uh, a complete uh, dissect the section of the, the specimen and cleared the, 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 the neck uh, with, the, with all the lymph nodes. And it, in the, this specimen also, we could find the classic features of uh, cuniculatum carcinoma. And uh, the patient is doing good. Uh, is already has uh, three years and she's still alive and doing well. And that, that was a, a, an interesting case that, that we got. Um, this case uh, is just because it's big, because it's a, a, a pyogenic granuloma. Yeah, you see a really huge nodule. Uh, this, this kid would uh, have, have a, a trauma during his soccer practice. But the thing is, it started to grow fast because he would lick it. And then when it got big enough, he started to suck it, to, to hide it from everybody. Yeah? So he has this crust all over. He tried to put uh, uh, medicine uh, like violet, uh, gentian violet, for try to burn it, but it only made things worse. It was a really simple uh, uh, biopsy and uh, the interesting features, microscopic features, was this uh, uh, dried necros the area, né? like a gangrene, dry gangrene, uh, with uh, a proliferation of, of, of uh, biofilms. And deep in, in the lesion, we, we saw the regular uh, pyogenic granuloma features. Uh, so uh, I, we found that pretty interesting. This case is, is published if you want to uh, read it uh, uh, in, uh, in this uh, journal of dentist for children. This case uh, is available in Dr. Uh, Camille Farah Contemporary Oral Medicine, which I, I, I had the pleasure to help in one of the chapters. Uh, this was a huge shivanoma né, in the tongue. The patient wouldn't talk. It uh, was difficult for him to speak because uh, correctly speech because of the nodule was the size of a, a lemon. And uh, we, we had to open the, the tongue in half, 
but uh, we our approach uh, aimed uh, to in the in the in this uh, line and to incise in this line uh, that the, the term is the border of the tongue and the dorsum of the tongue. That, that's a safe place for you to cut open a, a tongue because you, you miss the, the, the most uh, important uh, vessels and, and nerves. And we got uh, the total enucleation of the lesion. And afterwards, the patient entered to speech therapy and, and returned uh, to his normal in 21 days. Pretty nice case. This case is a very challenging one. I still don't have the final uh, diagnosis for that. I invite you to read this article published in European Journal of Dentistry. Uh, we, we call them a metastatic biphasic uh, uh, primitive tumor in the mandible. Uh, this kid eventually deceased from this lesion. Uh, it was a really aggressive lesion with fast growth and uh, really hard to, to, to perform a biopsy. Uh, the first biopsy that was made in, in, in a hospital environment didn't produce uh, any, uh, any good uh, uh, material for diagnosis. So he had to go to another uh, procedure with, which got small fragments actually, but enough for us to see that the lesion had uh, like uh, areas of uh, ear line, cartilage-like uh, matrix. It had a uh, duct form uh, with uh, um, a similar to ectasia, ectasic uh, material inside uh, that uh, led me to think about a uh, aggressive, like a um, poorly differentiated uh, mucopridemoid carcinoma, but that was ruled out in, in Uno. Uh, and then I thought about a primitive neuroectodermal tumor, but the thing is, is that not only the epithelium was proliferating, but also the connective tissue. And the connective tissue would present like a really, also a, a really bad uh, behavior with, with a lot of frequent mitosis and uh, uh, very strongly reacting with KI67. Um, so this boy was referred to the, the oncologic hospital and uh, he stayed there for six months because we didn't have a, a, a final decision on the diagnosis. They, they sent the, the specimen to, to uh, immuno histochemistry in Sao Paulo People in Sao Paulo also, uh, the pathologists, general pathologists over there also uh, reported uh, the tumor without uh, a final diagnosis, asked for a, a private consultation. The private consultation also didn't end up with a, with a final diagnosis. So we, we, we closed the deal at, uh, with that, you no, know, uh, uh, a descriptive uh, uh, report, and uh, the kid, he during his stay in the in the hospital, he got progressively uh, worse, needing more and more uh, 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 medications and painkillers and and uh, then he began to, to get uh, sedated. And then he started to, they, they performed a, a 
uh, scintillography, which, which showed that the lesion already had reached uh, his arm, his forearm, and uh, it, it was like a, a metastatic behavior. And he uh, developed all sorts of complications during this time and eventually deceased. Uh, here we, we, we made a, in the article a uh, 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 table with possible uh, 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 differential diagnosis, but all, none of them completely fulfilled the, the case. We thought about odontogenic carcinosarcoma, amyloblastic fibrosarcoma, undifferentiated mucopidemoid carcinoma, urine sarcoma, uh, 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 primitive neuroctodinal tumor, synovial sarcoma, mesenchymal chronic sarcoma, desmoplasic small round cell tumor, neuroblastoma. Wow, it is really hard. This one uh, also was a very aggressive case uh, that we end up thinking that it is an uh, anaplastic or, or poorly differentiated melanoma. Uh, but in the beginning, I thought there was a primitive neurotoderma tumor uh, as well. As you can see, it was a rapid growing uh, lesion. Uh, it, it, I, I got the first uh, biopsy. Uh, and I, I did a, a descriptive uh, diagnose uh, asking for uh, immuno. And, uh, and the, the, the report of the immuno uh, called as an anaplastic tumor uh, of uh, primitive nature. Uh, and uh, because of the HMB45 positivity, it was thought that it probably was a, a, a melanoma, a differentiated melanoma. Uh, this this uh, patient went through chemo and uh, radiotherapy and uh, she passed away uh, one and a half year after the resection of the lesion. Uh, sometimes we we don't get to win. Yeah. This case, uh, I'm, I'm heading to the end of the presentation, Dr. Mandana. Uh, this case was pretty stunning because it was just a maxillary torus, but it's just gigantic. The thing, uh, in this case, that was different uh, was because uh, the patient had was HIV positive and was on on the cocktail uh, treatment, and uh, some of those uh, uh, medications have uh, reported with uh, increased bone formations. I don't, I can't say for sure but it's something to consider, yeah? Because I, I never seen such huge uh, uh, torus, in, in, tor, torus, maxillary torus in my life. Uh, here is the surgical approach. It was performed by one of our grad students. Uh, she, she had trouble uh, during the surgery, so I had to assume in the middle of the surgery surgery to finish because uh, it, it was really big. And uh, the result was pretty, pretty good. Um, no further complications. Just a torus, but it's gigantic. Amazon, amazing onic. And here uh, it has this really nice case. Uh, which I, I, I had the help in the diagnosis of Dr. Uh, Roman Carlos from Guatemala. Guatemala. 
Uh, this case is a 33-year-old male, blind male. Uh, he got blind in, uh, early in his life and uh, uh, been suffering from dental infections and, and for all his life, he didn't know what he had. Uh, he was under follow-up uh, in the in the blood disease hospital without a diagnosis. They only would monitor it, his his blood count, and uh, and he he always had uh, uh, really uh, strange. Uh, uh, blood maturation pattern uh, and they didn't know what it was. Because of his trismus, he, his, he, he sought for our attention and in our school we have a, a CBT uh, scan and when I saw this feature uh, I was like uh, shocked, you know, because it, it, it didn't uh, uh, stop with the, the, the jaws, uh, bones, you know. Uh, we could see a really dense bone and a lot of features that would indicate a, a chronic sclerosis in uh, osteomyelitis, osteomyelitis. Uh, but then when we, we take a look in other features, we would see this really dense bone everywhere, marble-like bone. Uh, so we asked him for uh, the whole body uh, imaging and he got the stomach and we closed the, the deal as a osteopetrosis. And, and it's the, the only case of osteopetrosis I ever uh, had in my life. And uh, we started treating him, his problems, his dental problems, and uh, with uh, endodontics, dental extractions, and uh, photobiomodulation therapy, and uh, physiotherapy. And he, he got back his mouth opening. We, we fixed all those, those dental problems. And he's, two, he's three years already with us, doing fine and controlling this lesion. Now he knows what he, he's got. And uh, his t the, the team in, in, the, in, the, in the blood hospital, blood disease hospital now uh, is treating him uh, better and monitoring him uh, uh, with more guidance in what they, they have to do. The, he doesn't have any uh, bone marrow left. He doesn't, uh, all his, his blood uh, hematopoiesis is, uh, uh, is in his, uh, his liver or his uh, other, uh, uh, splenum and everything. He, he doesn't have any hematopoiesis uh, uh, in the in the in the uh, bone marrow, you know, because he doesn't have bone marrow. So he has extramedular hematopoiesis, which doesn't give a a, a really mature uh, set of cells. Uh, they are always a little bit immature, but it functions well. And he's just uh, more propensed to some infections, and uh, and these oral infections that actually was his most frequent infection, and we are now handling that pretty good, pretty well. And this case was really really odd for me. Uh, I that's also the only case I I've got in my life. This, this guy came, he's also from Pará State. He, he came to us uh, with a history of uh, 
é, múltiplo osteomas. Ok, múltiplo osteomas, I, I thought, ah, that, that's what I got the, in his papers. And I, I, I didn't saw him first. I was like thinking about Gardner uh, syndrome, something like that. But then when I, I, I saw him, uh, he would like a, a left side uh, facial palsy and he wouldn't do expression. He, he had trismus and he couldn't open his mouth. And, uh, and when you on palpation, it was really stiff and hard and, and really stiff strange even the tip of his nose was, was uh, and one thing that was remarkable is, is where they actually performed tests uh, biopsies he, he had already performed three biopsies during his life this process began with him like three years old he already begun to 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 present some lesions every time he performed the bi biopsy it got worse in the in the surrounding area yeah and uh i didn't perform any biopsy i, I asked uh for them to uh, for the family to mail me to ask for the the blocks of past uh biopsies and what i saw was this uh, bone mixed with connective tissue and and uh, muscular tissue and the uh, imaging uh, of the case, tomography of this case showed that he had almost uh, complete ossification of his uh, mimic muscles. Uh, the, the ligaments of the TMJ were, were also uh, uh, ossified. And uh, this case, we we end up diagnosing uh, a fibrodysplasia ossificans, uh, progressive ossificans fibrodysplasia, uh, which is caused by by uh, no mutation, and uh, uh, we still. Uh, waiting for the, the, the sequence because uh, it's really expensive, the, the, this sequencing. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't advise any surgical procedures on him, but the family uh, thought because he, he, he was really with a hard time in doing oral hygiene and, and for eating. So he, they end up doing because usually when you operate these cases it worse things but uh, the case got like uh, really attention of the, the the this team the surgical team in in para and they even called a, a, a french doctor which came to operate the boy they cleaned everything they they remove all the 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 ossified uh, structures and place the uh, uh, TMJ prosthesis. So uh, this is, is quite recent. The, her mom uh, mailed to me the, this this uh, picture. It's uh, two years after we, I started to follow him up, and uh, he's now opening his mouth, and but we don't know if. Uh, how things are gonna evolve from that. Uh, it's, it's a really, really, really hard uh, case to do any prognosis because you don't have much thing in the literature to hang on. So we are uh, learning along the way. So that's it's a really nice case here. And finally, I, I actually shared this case uh, once with Dr. Boko. Uh, this case was in a, in a refugee from Venezuela. Uh, we, are, we are 
Uh, we are receiving a lot of, of refugees from uh, Venezuela because of the, the left uh, dictatorship that they have over there. And people are starving. And they got here in really bad shape, hungry, with all sorts of diseases, infectious diseases. Uh, in fact, we, we don't know the precise cause of this bilateral necrotizing cellometaplasia. Uh, the thing is, the, the, the patient uh, got accepted uh, in, in the hospital uh, with, uh, with uh, symptoms of and, and, and clinical uh, clinical uh, suspect of measles. And uh, there was a measles outbreak from people from Venezuela at that time, uh, but also was considered uh, diphtheria and other uh, viral infections. And uh, they didn't know what to do. They, they started to treat with all sorts of antibiotics and, and uh, stuff that didn't do any good and the lesion wouldn't progress. Uh, so uh, they, they gave him, uh, they released him from, from hospital care and, and, and referred him to us. When we, we saw, we didn't want to perform any, any uh, biopsy because it was really characteristic of a, a necrotizing cellometaplasia. So we just started a photobiomodulation therapy and uh, was, uh, they, uh, was like three times a week and in two weeks he was he was pretty good. Uh, the the mucosa uh, uh, recovered uh, pretty well and pretty fast, you know, with, with the, this therapy. Uh, so this case is also available for you to, to take a look. We, we do a lot of, of differential diagnosis of, of the probable cause, cause because we are not certain if it was trauma because usually trauma causes a unilateral uh, necrotizing cellometaplasia. And in this case, it was bilateral. And, and he had this story of, of sore throat and uh, fever and all that. And so we have a, a nice uh, a table in the, in the article uh, discussing this, this differential diagnosis, which I recommend for you. And finally, the, that's the last case, Dr. Mandana, Dr. Ragu, Dr. Boku. Uh, this case was really remarkable for me because this patient was like in the, in the first day of, of, of the semester in the university. Uh, we were doing uh, uh, programming uh, the patients uh, without the students. I, I go there and I, I li like make a, a see like 80 patients, 90 patients and, and, and schedule them uh, to be treated as I, I see the, the, the urgency for the treatment. And, uh, and this guy came he, he, he thought he had cancer. Uh, someone told him he had cancer and he was referred to us from, from a, a hospital. Uh, he had a, a, a biopsy performed at this hospital. He, he gave me this old report, histopathological report of uh, a, a, Candidiasis. Uh, and when I opened his mouth, I saw uh, a orange thing in his palate. A orange thing occupying most of his palate. I asked him what was that, and he was like, "Oh, this I I, I used this." 
it's just cotton. I, I use this, this only for communicating because if I take it off, I, I, uh, my sound, my voice sounds like uh, an, uh, an nasally. Uh, so when I took it off, I saw this crack, uh, crack creature <laughs> in, in the hard palate. Uh, was perforated. Uh, it had. I, I saw the septum. The septum of the nasal septum had was ne uh, in process of necrosis, and there was this like eight uh, uh, pellets of uh, medicine. Uh, over there, there, there was like uh, anti-inflammatory that he he would place inside the the, the thing, the the hole. <laughs> uh, he believed that that was helping, and then I I I went okay. So there's something here that started all this and you will tell me because you didn't told anyone this but i know because you don't have just the problem in the heart palate your uh, your tongue has this giant ulcer with uh, smooth uh, borders it's not like really uh, enlarged borders the border was really smooth and the tip of the tongue and the, and the apex of the tongue already had another ulcer so I, I was thinking you are using something probably a drug probably i don't know what but you are placing it in the tongue and you are using inside your your heart palate and then he gave me the most annoying explanation uh, because he's he's a blind person and he got uh, this little uh, uh, which I, I will never know for sure what was the lesion the initial lesion that he got this biopsy of candidiasis and uh, he started to use uh, alumin, pot potassium alumin, which is a, a crystal that people use after shave or as a stipic uh, thing, you know. And he he would suck this uh, this crystal, place in his tongue, and and because uh, uh, it would uh, help him not to feel the lesion. And that necrotizes everything and did all, all the, the, these lesions that you can see. Uh, what we did, uh, we referred to the, uh, our partner, Dr. Fayad, our maxillofacial surgery. They remove all the, the necrotized uh, uh, tissue. And Dr. Uh, Brigitte, which has this uh, oral maxillofacial prosthesis program, they perform this uh, uh, acrylic uh, obturator, and the, the patient denied uh, further uh, surgery, surgical procedures. He, he didn't want us to, to perform a, a, a reconstruction surgery. Uh, he denied it, and he got uh, like satisfied with with this uh, obturator solution. So uh, that's a pretty annoying case that I would like to end up this presentation. So now I'm here for you guys. Uh, I end up with some nice visits I I got along this years uh, from people around the world. I can see you, you are noticing someone very familiar here, Dr. Hagu in his time here, Dr. Roman, uh, Dr. 
and Brad Neville with Patty, his wife, Dr. Sukmi Wu, also came here already. I, I already called Dr. Uh, Jerry Boko, but he doesn't like uh, the 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 hot uh, and the fish, and uh, and he already told me that he was not coming. <laughs> but I did call him to come here, <laughs> and uh, thank you for your attention at this time. And that's uh, pretty much uh, everything I, I had to show. Well, I only said that uh, I couldn't come there because I'm so old and my legs are so bad that uh, it's hard to get around now. Plus, Brad Neville was one of my students, so uh, he could represent me. <laughs> and Roman Carlos is one of my very good friends, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mandana, what do we do from here? Yeah, I'm waiting for Dr. Ragu. Uh, Ragu, you ready? Uh, You're there. He's there, yes. Yeah, uh, Mandana, I'm there. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Tiago for that wonderful uh, presentation. He has a lot of uh, appreciation on the chat box as well. Usmani has uh, a question for Tiago. In the case of amyloblastoma, what is the reason for this aggressive growth? Are the molecular biomarkers that determine this behavior and that have any clinical repercussions? It's from first morning. Well, in the case uh, of amyloblastoma, what is the reason for this aggressiveness? I, I think I think this aggressiveness uh, it's totally because of of the delay in start the treatment. I, I don't think actually it's that aggressive, you know. I think these cases that I, I, I presented to you are uh, lately diagnosed. Uh, that's the, 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 the cause. You saw a case which the, the, the lady waited for 10 years to, to have a diagnosis, have a, a three kilograms uh, size lesion that's not aggressive actually it's pretty mild uh, but uh, I, we know that uh, there are some some uh, BRAF mutations related with amyloblastoma but I, I didn't investigate that I, I, I'm just uh, I, I'm just worried here because we, we didn't need to have this uh, Amazonic size lesions. You know? uh, they didn't need to be so big, so huge, so difficult to treat, so uh, 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 causing so much damage to reconstruct and difficult because they're just uh, left there. We, we had cases here that uh, the 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 affected patient uh, was uh, a native uh, Indian. So uh, he, they would treat with their uh, medicine, you know, the, the cultural medicine and that wouldn't do anything. And, and, and the only thing worse made it worse with the secondary infections. And you, I, I didn't place him, I didn't show to you because it's just too ugly, you know. To, it's, and and it's, uh, sometimes it gets helpless, you know. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tiago. No more questions. May now request uh, Dr. Jerry for his expert comments and feedback about uh, the cases that were presented by uh, Dr. Tiago. Oh, I'm, I was fascinated by the whole thing. Um, I was, uh, I'm probably the last one standing of the generation of oral pathologists who were trained by the very first oral pathologists. And in my case, uh, Bob Gorlin was trained by a uh, phys physician, a medical pathologist back in the forties, might've been even late thirties when he started. And uh, he was trained by one of the best. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody is considered one of the two or three biggest uh, names in medical pathology in our country from last century. 
And uh, he had in his career, Bob Gorlin uh, named over 400 new diseases. And of course, Bill Schaefer and the other names from that generation, they got to name all the big stuff. Uh, uh, my generation, we just got to name the little stuff. But I have had, because I came to West Virginia and we had people coming from pretty much all over the state, um, <clears throat> people with strange things, like the same experience you've had. And it was just, it's frustrating and absolutely fascinating to try to figure out what is going on. I wanted to, if I could share the screen for a moment, I just wanted to show you something. Yes, yes, please. Okay. Uh, guess what I had just uh, last month? Mm -hmm. This was a lower oh, lip of a patient. Oh. Not, not from the mountains here in West Virginia, but it's one of my students who graduated a couple of years ago who is in Washington, D.C., not a small place. So uh, we do get it. We have a different name for it. Uh, I think the Brazilian is a little more uh, common, but it was. Uh, we still get those kinds of things happening to us. Your cases are really very, very interesting because uh, number one, they've they've been, I guess, neglected so much that uh, you run into situations that are way beyond what a lot of us have to do deal with. In my early years, there was a fellow from uh, Nigeria. He was the first oral pathologist there, and he's the one who came to our meetings, and he's the one who showed these gigantuan types of uh, lesions. And so we started calling that, if we saw a big, big lesion, we would call it a Nigerian type lesion. They were mostly amyloblastomas and salivary tumors. But, uh, you know, that's a fellow from Nigeria actually replaced me in Texas. Uh, there is a pretty good oral path uh, contingency there. But uh, that was the experience in the early years. And it's kind of the same thing that you have. Uh, there just aren't yeah. very many oral pathologists around and you get all, everything, including the yeah. really difficult ones. But I think yeah. that's, uh, it's very frustrating, but it's also, I liked it. I'm glad that yeah. I, I came here to West yeah. Virginia because, uh, and I'm glad that I focused on clinical cases because uh, that just brought everything to me. I, if I couldn't figure it yeah. out, I would take a picture, put the microscopic slide and a little note card with the history and put it in a, a baggie and toss it in a cardboard box. And uh, I had the word unknown on the side of that box. And when I finished my career, I had seven boxes of unknowns. <clears throat> so I am in the process now in my retirement of going through all of those. And one of them, uh, chronic lingual papulosis, was uh, I, I finally published the paper about five, six years ago. And it's not anything super deep uh, scientifically, but I just got last week word from Triple O that that was the most often cited paper of the last five years. <laughs> so nice. people are very interested in new things. And if yeah. you don't give a name to new things, then you, you, nobody studies it. And in your yeah. case, you've got a few things you can give a name to, and uh, they're not totally unknown, but they're really very rare. And uh, I think... Sure. The oral path community is a group of people that are interested in weird. Um, when I was, uh, we have this organization called the Western Society of Teachers of Oral Path. We meet annually and we exchange teaching, clinical teaching material. And when I was president and then I was secretary for almost a decade, I uh, started a, a, an award to people who had presented, they'd become very well known for their clinical understanding of oral diseases. And I called it the, the Western Wizards of Odd. And I think I, I, I still like that name better than anything else. We really like <laughs> odd things. <laughs> nice, so, nice. Good, good job, good yeah. job. Thank you, Dr. Jerry. Uh, Thank you. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it's just an opportunity to study. Uh, uh, most of these cases, uh, sometimes we we run fast talking about them, but uh, they they went through my bed with me. I slept with them. I woke up <laughs> <Yeah>. with them. <laughs> they made part of me. They are part of me right now, you know, because I I suffered with the families. I I, I have I 
talk with the parents every day sometimes because they, they are already part of me, right? Yep. And that helps you, I think, you, you can pick up facts that you otherwise would not have known about certain diseases that will help mm -hmm. the rest of us understand it because you can get close to the people. And mm -hmm. I, have, I have a personality that kind of, people tell me a lot more than I, I want to hear normally. <laughs> so, uh, I, but I do pick up things that I would have missed. Uh, when I went to Houston, uh, I didn't even know people put cocaine in their mouth. I really didn't know that. Yeah. But I saw a bunch of people in our urgent care clinic and it turns out uh, they put a lot of cocaine in their mouth and we discovered over a dozen different things that occur in the mouth from that. And if it wasn't for yeah. my personality and plus the personality of the uh, director of that, that uh, department, uh, we would never have known. People would never have admitted to us. Yeah, so. yeah. The, the, this case of palatal perforation, uh, the first thing I thought it was, it, it was like drug abuse. And, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was the first thing uh, and I was like, oh, tell me, you, he, he was a, a math teacher and blind math teacher. I, I was like, no, I only have problem with, with drinking problems. You, you, you can, uh, that's the only thing I have. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, it was difficult for me to get to know what I, but I was like, you have to remember there's something you are using over there. The only thing I use is, uh, here is, is, it's called Pedra Pomi. Pedra is stone, Pomi, I don't know. Pedra Pomi, it's a, a potassium aluminum. It, it's really uh, inexpensive. You, you can find it uh, in every market. People here use that stuff for a bunch of things and, and none of them are good. Uh, you know they use it uh, because it's not it's, it's you you can't control the 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 the, the amount of damage that the, this thing happens you know when i was starting to do that article uh i i, I found in africa a case that of a uh, uh, anal vaginal fistula because uh, uh, the woman over in africa would wash uh, their vaginas with, with this liquid uh, of th this potassium aluminum, which which becomes like sulfuric acid, uh, mm -hmm. to 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 seem like uh, they have, they never been deflowered before. So mm -hmm. because it, it, it makes a, a, a lesion over there that contracts the the the, the vulva uh, canal and and that led to a, 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 a anal vaginal fissure. Uh, sin, sinus tract, just, you know? just proves how really weird we are as human beings. Yeah. yeah. I had, I was thinking, by the way, uh, I, I made up a name for that tumor. You said that was a ball of cotton that he shoved up in there to plug the hole. Yeah. Yeah. And cotton is all cellulose fibers. So it's really a mega fibrosis or mega <laughs> fibromatosis or something like that. <laughs> something like that. He, he, would, he would mix the, 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 the cotton with the uh, uh, ancillon. Uh, do you have ancillon? It's like a triancinolone uh, mixed with the... Oh, yeah. Uh, You're right. Uh, it, it's, it's a triancinolone acetonide uh, paste and, and would uh, mix it with... Uh, uh, AS uh, pellets and would mix with uh, other stuff and, and plug it all in, you know. That's what, pretty, pretty nuts. Well, that we, we get a lot of that uh, people with self home, home remedies. They've been living yeah. in the mountains and they've, they've, they've used these remedies for hundreds of years. So, um, and they're going to continue to use them. So, yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. I think uh, we'll have to give the last word to Dr. Mandana. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just also thinking that now it's it's uh, from uh, countries that have difficulty because of access to the U.S. where you, we don't normally relate it to uh, any problem with availability of health care, but again, because of difficulty of access, probably. It's, it's just right across the board. I think we experiences are the same. 
and in india of course we have yeah. very similar experiences sometimes because while we are concentrated in the cities in the rural areas in the villages sometimes there are hundreds of kilometers without any um, oral pathologists being around or any uh, in the, the healthcare units are there but that's not the dental side so it's yeah. the same but uh, at the it's end small world. <laughs> it's it, it's bad for the patients and that that's a sad yeah. part i think across the yeah. world what we need to do is we need to train the first doctor or the healthcare workers who sees the patient to be able to refer them for dental problems or for anything in the oral and maxillofacial region to the right centers i think that that's where we all need to go and that seems to be across uh, at least three parts of the world i think it yeah. must be there everywhere for about uh, the first two decades that i was teaching oral path i taught about eight hours uh, of lecture in oral pathology in the medical pathology um, courses. And uh, during that time, the people who learned those, they were constantly calling me, hey, I've got this thing, I've got that thing. But I've never, I don't know of any other school where an oral pathologist actually teaches pathology <clears throat> in a medical course. It's very, very unusual here. And we get along fine yeah. with the pathologists. Up there. I, I, I got uh, our, our oral pathology service have uh, 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 otorhinolaryngology auto and 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 uh, residents. ENT? They, yeah. they 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 go there and they have a uh, like two months uh, in a, in their in their training they spend with us. It's oh, kind of nice. Very good, very good. Uh, very good. Yes, so thank you so much. I think uh, we shall have to wrap up. I will just. Uh, share the certificates and we shall call it a night for us and a morning for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. One minute, you one minute uh, Professor Thank Boku, you, there is a little certificate for everybody. Please wait. Okay. Bye now. Yes. I'm, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I'm so happy to have you guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. Happy, happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see your certificate? Professor Tiago, can you see your certificate? Sure, sure. Let me, let me, okay. <laughs> okay. I just got the, the, I freeze the, I the screen, so. Okay, yeah. yes. So thank you so much for being with us. It, it was you. wonderful. Very nice cases. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So long. Very thank well. you. Bye. <laughs> yes. And Raghu, here is your ninth certificate thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Wendell. you're most welcome always a pleasure and i think professor boko left but we will send him a yeah. certificate later yeah. yes right. okay so i have you and 38 to go sorry 62 and counting yes so 62 we'll and counting to, uh, yes yes, uh, so yes. This year, Probably, I think, uh, will we be able to cross the 100 mark? We have another 16 weeks, so I think uh, yes, definitely going to be sometime next, yeah, yes. next, next year in the month of March. We'll have a yes. 100. 100. On the 28th will be one year, actually, since the first video was released on YouTube. So that will be our one-year anniversary. You're doing, you're doing a great job. It's, <laughs> I, I really send you all my nice vibrations for you to to keep this uh work because it's a lot of work i know and uh i hope that uh, more and more people get to to know this really nice uh, thank thing you. That you you're developing thank you thank you Hagu. I, thank I you, you take care love to your family all right yes thank you. take thank care you. bye 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 Bye. So on this Tuesday, we have another forensic odontology and you can join us for a translational research in forensic odontology by Professor Ashit. Uh, of course, he's been on the channel before, so you can also visit that. And yes, I know today we went a little uh, 
fairly late for us, at least on the on this side of the world. It's quite late, so I will just wrap it up. <laughs> Good night. All right. Thank you very much. See you all. See you Bye. all on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.